In order to access the milling wizard functionality from our Kinema Express, we need to select the mill wizard icon underneath other features on the startup page. When we select that, the first thing we need to do is select the type of units that we're working with. So in this case, we're going to work with an inch file. I then need to browse to pull up the file. In our case, we're going to be using a 3D Studio file. Now we can open up triangle models and surface models of various type. Now this file was just downloaded off of um, an internet website for free, so it's just a basic file that you can bring in and just to go over the process of how the mill wizard works. You can see that it picks up the model dimensions for the file, and if the file was in metric we could check this option and conversions would apply to get this file ready to run it through the mill wizard stage. So if I go ahead to the next process, the next step is going to be to actually orientate the part correctly for machining. Now depending on how I want to cut this is going to determine the orientation. Obviously every part is going to be different. Now this is what our top orientation looks like. If I select bottom you should notice that I'll have the underside of the plane shown. Uh, we can also look at the left, the right, the front, and the back. So to try, it all depends on how you want to cut out this part as to how you're going to orientate it. We're going to stick to orientate from the top and if I view down the Z I should be able to get an idea of how I want to set this up on the machine. If I want this material to be orientated differently all I have to do is say rotate 90 degrees and now I'm looking at the way I want to actually cut my part out on the machine. The next section is the sizing portion. So now we have to decide how we're going to size the model. Now I only have control over one of these values because they're all linked together. So if I set the X to 12, notice that the Y and the Z values will update accordingly. The percentage as well will control how these values update too. So you decide which one you want. Depending on whether you want to control the thickness of the model, then you might be setting up that parameter and that dimension. So the next thing that I need to define is where the cut plane will lie. The way that Mill Wizard is set up is that anything above the plane will be removed once I start going through the process. So at the moment, the only part of the plane that's above the plane is the tiny edge piece of the top here. So what we need to do is position it so that the plane is actually above um, the reference or the cut plane. So if I click the bottom of model, that will force the plane above the material. Now depending on whether this is a two-sided part, you might want that plane directly in the center so that you can set up the milling for the top side and then repeat the process for the bottom side. In this particular case, I'm going to go with the bottom of model, but then I'm also going to nudge the part up a little bit because you can see there's a tiny gap underneath the bottom of the plane. So I'm just going to adjust this to an exact value of negative 1 and click apply. So this just shows you that you can set this to be any value that you want in order to force the cut plane to be positioned. I then go ahead and click next. Now I need to set up the tooling parameters to cut out this part. Now Mill Wizard will remember the last uh, tools that have been set up. So you'll notice that it's already pulling up an end mill quarter inch for the roughing and an eighth inch ball nose for the finishing. These are the tools that I'm going to use but these are also the tools that I used last time that's why these values are being, are being remembered. So if I take a look at the quarter inch tool all of these values were just pulled from the basic wood or plastic quarter inch roughing section. I can then go ahead and change the step down or any other parameters that I want for this part. In regards to the eighth inch ball nose I'm just going to leave all the defaults for that. Now in regards to the allowance, you'll notice that it leaves 0.2 by default. So it's leaving a tiny skin on the part for the finishing toolpath to complete. The finishing toolpath does not have an allowance, but obviously these values can be changed as required. Now the add border, what this does is it takes the radius of the largest tool, which is the quarter inch, plus it adds on our allowance of 0.2, and then it adds a little additional clearance to make sure that we have a lot of extra room around the model for the machining. The next stage is going to be to set up the material. So it's picking up a model thickness of just over 2 inches. If I click the setup button it allows me to define whatever I want the material block to be. In this particular case I've got it set to 2 and a quarter inches. I can also control whether or not I zero from the top of the block or the top of the table. And I can also control whether or not I have it machine away the top or leave stock on the bottom. Now obviously if you did have a two-sided part you might want to set this up so that this portion of the model was in the top half of the block. Then when you, cut, when you started to cut the underside you could then position it for the bottom half. We go ahead and say next and now we can actually calculate the roughing strategy. Notice that all the undercuts have been removed because now it's actually been rendered in as if it was an ArtCam file at this point. So I'm going to calculate the roughing which is going to slice up the plane. 
Now, depending on the step down that was previously set, this will determine the number of passes that it takes. And now I'm going to simulate that toolpath to see how it looks. Once we're happy with that, we're going to go ahead and calculate the finishing toolpath. The finishing toolpath is set to run perpendicular to the roughing toolpath. On the previous page, there was an option to change that if you wanted to. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to simulate the finishing toolpath. Now that we've got that finished, we can go ahead and click Next. Now depending on whether or not you have a tool change on your machine, you could have set your tool paths up so that the first one, the roughing, was tool number one and the finishing was tool number two or whatever they happen to be. Then you could select both of them, move them over to the side and choose a tool change output in order to save them out. Once you've got the tool path saved, the last step is just to finish and the toolpath, the code will be saved out, you'll be brought back into the regular express screen. Now this product on its own is called Mill Wizard and can also be purchased online for $250. So if you have a customer who's looking for just a cam side to cut their 3D models, this might be a useful product to introduce them to. It is however embedded into ArtCam Express as additional functionality.